Hi guys, welcome back to Bloom TV. Today I've got a really exciting video for you and I'm going to talk about my favourite books of all time and these kind of compromise of series um, and mostly standalones, uh, kind of. Yeah, mostly standalones um, and a couple of series that I just wanted to talk about, which are just my all-time favourites. Some of them I talk a lot of, about a lot on my channel, others I don't. And I've actually got ten here. Um, I'd say about five of them are those all-time favourite standalone books. And the others are like very, very slightly lower, but they're all favourites. Um, some of them I've reread, others I've just reread parts of. Some of them I one of these series is very unexpected and I've reread it about ten times. You can probably all guess what it is. Um I just wanted to talk about them because as I said, I just wanted to let you know, um, this will probably change, but a lot of these I feel like they won't change, these aren't just kind of like one-time favourites, these are books that I think will always be important to me and that are important to me for certain reasons, so I'm just going to get started because I've got ten books here. So the first book is the one that I don't think will be any surprise to anybody, and it's Harry Potter, the whole series. I'm just holding up this book because I have, they are so heavy when you hold up all seven of them together. Um, this is the first one, um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, as you can all tell. My editions are completely falling apart. Um, one of, I think this one's the one that has a yeah, missing page. Oh, it's not a missing page. This is actually comes out. You have to be so careful when you read it. I'm contemplating sellotaping it, but that's the thing I hate is most is sellotaping books. This doesn't really need an explanation. I just wanted to briefly say that it was on this list and that I wasn't forgetting it. I've reread this series over ten times. I've watched the films a lot. I just love it. It is my childhood. Let's move on. The other book is one I think I've talked about quite a lot as well on my channel and it was my first book that I ever really loved apart from Harry Potter in my like earlier years as a teen and it is How I Live Now by Meg Rosoff. I just love Meg Rosoff as a person and as an author. I've met her actually. She's so lovely. She's wonderful. She's just a really lovely person. Look, there it says. It says Frank Harrod. Um, keep reading Meg Rosoff which I feel is very something that I take to heart every day. I am always reading. Um, this is a book that is actually just, well, recently, a couple of years ago, was turned into a film with Sasha Ronan. It's a really excellent film adaptation, so if you haven't watched that, I'd recommend that as well. Um, and this is about a 15-year-old girl called Daisy, who's from New York, who goes to live in England, rural England, um, kind of because she's fallen out with her family, her dad and her stepdad. Her mum died when she was a baby. And she goes to visit and live with her family and then war breaks out. And you don't really know much about the war. Um, it's World War Three. that's all you know. And you know that England has, and Britain has been invaded by um, armed troops from the opposite side. Um, and, yeah, the opposition. And it's about that and it's about family and love and loss and survival. And it is so excellent. I love it so very much. I just was engrossed in this book. I've read it a lot of times since then. I've watched the film quite a few times as well. Um, and it's just so excellent. The writing is beautiful. Um, Daisy does kind of have, like, there's tr slight trigger warnings for eating disorders in this book. Um, and blood at some points. Um, especially the film. It, the film is very gritty. Um, so just be aware of that. It wasn't something that I was originally noticed when I first read it because I read this when I was about 13 for the first time. Um, I wasn't something I did notice but the more I've noticed it you definitely notice it more once you read it and it's just something to be aware of going in and I get asked a lot about this edition. It's a paperback. I actually bought it when I was abroad on holiday I think in Italy in an English speaking an English bookshop abroad like when I was on holiday with my family so um, I don't know much about this edition but I love it and I can't stop rambling about it because it's beautiful and signed and I'd never ever get rid of this. The next book I want to talk about is one that I don't talk about, about on my channel and it is when God Was a Rabbit. This is by Sarah Winman. It's the only book that I've actually read by Sarah Winman. Oh, this is very well loved. Um, not perhaps well loved as Harry Potter, but when I first read this, I then gave it to my parents. Um, I gave it to my dad to read. I gave it to my mum to read. Um, because I loved it so very much. It's an excellent book. It's an adult. It's kind of, I would, I don't know, like the writing makes me think it's literary fiction, but it's just 
fiction. Um, it's about two sisters, Joe and Ellie. Yes, that is what I think. Um, and just about them growing up, and it has magical realism in it. It is so very, very wonderful. It is just beautiful. It expands them growing up in them being into their kind of mid adult, kind of in their thirties. And I can't say how much this was a good book. I just recommend it to everybody. This cover is gorgeous. There's also a US hardcover or paperback which has a really nice cover as well. I saw it on Book Depository the other day. Was contemplating buying it. But this one's really lovely as well, and I just recommend this book so many times, and it's just really beautiful. I can't recommend it enough. The third book I'm going to talk about, I think I've also talked about quite a lot, that is The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. This is a very old UK first edition. Um, it has recently had a lot of cover revamps, especially in the UK and the US, and this has gained a lot of popularity recently um, because um, Jandy's second book, I'll Give You the Sun, received the Prince Award and also the another award I think in America which is really great. Um, her other book is also a favourite of mine but I want to talk about this one. I read this when I was about 13 as well, quite soon to the time that I read How I Live Now and this has had probably one of the books that's had the most impact on me as a person. I just love this book. Um, it's about a girl called Lenny whose sister dies at the very beginning of the book and Lenny kind of is struggling to come to terms with the grief and it is about family and about losing someone that is very close to you and the grieving process but also developing new relationships with other people. The romance is still one of my favourite romances of all times. It's so stunning and there's also poetry in here. Um, also my one of my bestest friends Alice read this recently um, because I gave it to her for Christmas and she loved it too and I was so glad and it's got these amazing poems in it. Um, my edition was thoroughly ruined when I reread this um, when I was about 14 for the third time I think. I decided that it would be a great idea to write in it with orange fine liner and also underline things. Just lyrics to things. I wrote all these weird poems in there. Um, which I slightly regret doing, but I love this edition so much that I don't ever want to get rid of it and also no one ever read, wants to read my dodgy teenage poetry. Um, I'd highly recommend this. I know a lot of people probably know about this by now, but I still wanted to talk about it. And another book that I don't see very much love for on booktube, but I know is a very popular author, is The Impossible Knife of Memory by Laurie House Anderson. This is a newer favourite. Um, I read this last year for the first time, um, it actually came out last year, and I also reread it in the same year, and it made my top favourite, I think it was one of my top favourites along with one of the other books I'm going to talk about. This is such a stunning book, it's about Hayley whose dad has PTSD after going on, I think, I believe two or three tours of Iraq or Afghanistan, and her suffering from that, she never really went to conventional high school, and she's put into conventional high school in her final year because her dad's decided she needs to settle down if she's going to go to college or do something with her life that's not going around in a truck with her dad because her dad was a truck driver after he came home from Iraq. And it's about Haley dealing with those kind of consequences. Um, the second time I read it I tabbed this. This also has one of my favourite romances of all time and my favourite, probably one of my all time favourite male protagonists which is Finn. He is such a brilliant character, I love him. If I could marry him, I would, but I wouldn't want to steal him from Hayley. Um, and this is just a beautiful book. The writing is stunning. Anything Laurie House Anderson writes, I will read. I think she's amazing. I think she's a great author. So I'd really highly recommend this if you haven't read it already. Um, and then the other kind of favourite I want to talk about from last year was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. These two books I've mentioned a lot recently, so I'm not going to go too much into depth for this one. You can see it's won a lot of awards here. Um, this is also, I lent this to Alice and she really loved it as well, so you've got two people recommending this book to you. Um, this is about two boys in the 80s in the very south tip, southern tip of America in Texas. Um, and it's about sexuality and discovering who you are, it's a coming of age story, it's about friendship, and it is so importantly about family. As you can tell, I really love books that deal with family and kind of family relationships, they're my favourite kind of books. and this is a great one. I love it to pieces. It's so good and the cover is beautiful and I love the spine. 
And then the next book I'm going to talk about is the last contemporary book. Um, well, apart from, yeah, the last contemporary book. And it is my favourite romance novel of all time. And it is Easy by Tamara Weber. This is a really fantastic romance book. I love it a lot. I know a lot of people probably don't like this kind of thing. It's a new adult romance. Um, and it deals with sexual assault and rape. That's... I don't, I'm just going to say that off the bat, it's, that is a trigger warning, um, so just be aware of that if you want to read this, and um, it deals with that quite well, and that's what, why it's probably one of my favourites, is because it deals so much with that issue, and I feel like it deals with it so well. Guys, this just, this epitomises my thoughts. I reread a bit of this actually recently, about 100 pages of it, um, because I read um, online that it dealt with, like, wasn't very great for slut shaming and that's actually something I didn't pick up on the first time I read it because I was saying really engrossed and wasn't really noticing small things so that is the fault that I have with it um it does it does contain slut shaming it's not very prominent but it is there um but I feel like that's an issue with a lot of books not one that belong belongs singularly to this novel but the romance in this is fantastic it is my favorite romance of all time I love Lucas, I love Jacqueline, they're fabulous. Um, there's actually a, do you, like, this is a duology, but the other book's a companion novel following the same plot, and I hate books like that, so I don't know if I'd ever pick that up, but just be aware of that, and it's great. Please let me know if you've read it so we can find out about it in the comments. Um, the next book is another one, and it's a fantasy book, and it is a standalone. It's The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. Again, this has quite a lot of knowledge about it on the Zibic tubes. Um, this is about an island where there is magical horses that come out of the water, and every year there is a competition to see if you can like tame one of these horses and then ride them in the race, and there's a lot of prize money to be won if you win the race, but it's very dangerous and a lot of people die or get seriously injured. And this follows our main protagonist, Puck, and also Sean, and they both are competing in the race and for different reasons, and it's about their relationship, it's fabulous. The imagery in this book is the best imagery I've ever read. It reads like you're watching a film. And I know a lot of books are like that, but this is so beautifully written that you it is literally just like seeing all this beautiful cinematography of like some island off the north of England, like Lindisfarne or something. And it is so beautiful and I just love it so much. I love Maggie Stevato as a writer anyway, but this is probably my favourite by her. I have reread it many times and I love it. Highly recommend. The next book I've actually done a series review on, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it is Solace by Gail Carriger, the first book in the Parasol Protectorate series. It is no secret that I am massively obsessed with Gail Carriger. I love her. I think she's a fabulous person, as well as being a fabulous author. I'm not going to say too much about this, because I have done a non-spoiler review of the whole series, but I love this. I love all the characters. I love the world. I love the world very much. It is just great, and I cannot ramble on about it enough. My mum actually just read Solace recently on my insistence. Um, actually, I wasn't... She just came into my room and was like, oh yeah, I want to read Solace. I was like, I have done my job as a daughter um, by recommending that book to her, and she really enjoyed it too, so yay. The next book I'm going to talk about is also one my mum has read, and it's just kind of just symbolic of general this author and it is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Um, this is the first book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. Um, this is the first chronological series that takes place in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, um, although chronologically not what the first one written. This is again signed and personalised because I met Cassandra Clare last year and it was a brilliant experience. Um, this is a historical fiction trilogy. You probably all know what it's about. There's my rest of my Cassandra Clare books there. This is so great. I love this more than The Mortal Instruments, although I very much I love The Mortal Instruments too. Cassandra Clare is a genius. She is my favourite person for witty dialogue. Her witty dialogue is the best witty dialogue apart from perhaps Gail Carragher, um, they both excel at those two things and they excel at making very funny characters who are adorable and lovely and so lovable. And the relationships in this particular series are heartbreaking. The epilogue of... Clockwork Princess epilogue, that is all I need to say. If you've read the series, you will know 
the feels are real. Um, the last book I'm going to gonna talk about is actually the last one in the series, but it's the only one I own in a series, and it is Bitter Blue by Kristen Cashaw. Um, I have read this whole trilogy. It's called the Gracing Realm trilogy, I believe. Um, it's by Kristen Cashaw. The first one is Gracing, the second is Fire, and this is the third one, Bitter Blue. They don't follow in that chronological order, like time period, but that's the order that you're supposed to read them in. I love Gracing, it's probably my favourite. It's basically a high fantasy young adult trilogy that deals with very good issues that I think, and I think all young women should read this, as well as reading Easy, which is on the whole a very good book for dealing with like sexual assault and rape. This is a very good book for just dealing with problems which I think a lot of young women encounter. And it is excellent, I love it so much. I think it could be a bit more diverse but generally it's got a lot of good characters like a lot of there's quite a few LGBTQ characters across the series um just like disabled characters um who don't get miraculously solved or like healed by the end of the series and it's really great it deals with a lot of issues that I feel are prominent in like society that uh, focus on young women and it deals them in this high fantasy world and they're all kick-ass characters and super awesome and I recommend this series again to everyone. If you can get the hardback of this edition I recommend it. It has all these beautiful drawings in it and they're very charming um, I just highly recommend this. It's so great. And that is it for my favourite all-time books. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye.